Unplanned is, uh, it's just my story. I worked at Planned Parenthood for eight years. Um, loved my job, loved what I did. Believed that I was helping women, that's how I got involved in Planned Parenthood. And then really had my eyes opened. It just moved away from the catheter. They always move, that's why I do it this way. And I knew then that abortion took the life of an individual and unique human being. And I knew if those two things were true, then I was on the wrong side of this issue. I was on the wrong side of this debate. We had a, a wonderful girl that we know uh, by the name of Megan Harrington. She came up to us, uh, she's a Hollywood producer. She came up to us and gave us the book Unplanned by Abby Johnson, said you should make this a movie. I mean, someone that went from one side of the fence to literally the other side of the fence on such a, a hot button issue as abortion. Um, to me, that's, that's a powerful story. So as soon as we read the book, I was on board. About a year, year and a half ago, uh, we were coming together and praying about what are we going to do, what's up ahead, and we felt specifically at this time that it was, it was time to make Unplanned. I would get emails all the time from people who would say, uh, I have no experience in film, but I read your book and I want to turn it into a movie. I actually believed Abby more when she came into my office and told me she was now pro-life than I believed Chuck and Gary when they called and said, we're making a movie about Abby Johnson and we need to portray you and your wife. And I'm like, who is this? The email just said, we read your book. We'd like to turn into a film. Uh, we'd love to talk with you. And it was signed Chuck Konzelman. And I didn't know who that was. After she told me her story and we talked about the lawsuit and what had happened and her history, I was just blown away. And I said, you know, this is, this is probably gonna be a book one day. I said, they may even make a movie out of this. Abby's story is the most powerful story that the pro-life world has experienced up until this point. Sometimes the bravest thing you can possibly do is change your mind, and that's what Abby did. Seeing both sides and still having that characteristic of passion in helping women is something that people are really going to resonate with. We all have a story, and I, I, I think the impact that a true story can have, you just can't deny. Everything we've done in this movie is absolutely true. We haven't added or detracted from, from anything. We just tell the story straight as it is. You would think it's a film about life ending, but in many ways, it's a film about life beginning again. You actually get to encounter what women go through. You actually get to see what the reality is. I think that's gonna be huge for people. and be mind-changing. What this film does is allow us to look behind the curtain, look behind all the social media, see what's really happening in the clinic from an insider's perspective. There's never been a movie like this, and it's going to get labeled so many things. It'll be the anti-Planned Parenthood movie, the anti-abortion movie, the anti-woman movie, the anti-fill-in-the-blank, right? But the reality and the problem for the abortion industry is that it's true. I think once they see what's going on and watch the movie, I would, I would say that there are going to be a lot of people going, wow, I can't believe this was ever happening in our country. We moved forward in faith all throughout prep without knowing that we had the money to make the film until we got really close to shooting. And I had employees that were on for 10 weeks that didn't know if they'd had a job the next week. You know, I would tell them, okay, we can go another week and you're employed and hope to show up on Monday because uh, we're not sure we have enough to pay for the following week. So um, there's a commitment level that begins there when people would say, I'm so committed to this project. I want to be here. I want to be a part of this. I want to see this thing through. That, that kind of buy-in is not the same as I'm just showing up for a paycheck. We slid into the week before we were scheduled to start shooting with our financing incomplete and without a lead female for the role to play uh, Abby Johnson. Which you're not supposed to do. And rather than with doing, a week left. And we were unable to push the beginning of our shooting dates. 
Now we're Monday morning, we're shooting. We got a 4,000 square foot set. We have 150, 200 people working. We've got millions of dollars at stake here. And the Thursday night, we still don't have a lead. We got to do hair, makeup, she change her hair to red. 52 wardrobe looks 52. in the movie, and she hasn't, and no one started lining up her clothing yet. I mean, this is because we didn't know who it was going to be. So we're going through the list. Literally, one by one, I'm getting chopped down. The last person on my desk is this person, Ashley Bratcher. When I first auditioned for Unplanned, I didn't really know who Abby was, and I was so compelled just from those three pages of sides. I got online immediately. I listened to her testimony. I watched her videos on YouTube. And listening to Abby speak and tell her story, I was floored. I mean, I was just ugly crying, and it really, it really hit home for me um, on a very personal level. And I was just so moved by it that I, I went home and I told my husband, I said, I need to be a part of this film. She then sends us two emails with passion that was so powerful, and then speaks to us on the phone and says, all I can say is two years ago, the Lord spoke to me and told me he had a mighty work for me to do, but I was not ready. But when I was, he would tell me what it was and would bring it forward. And she says, I know this, this is my story to tell. Her story and I was, tell. she was so passionate. I was warned by multiple people, even people who knew that I had auditioned and just read the script said, you'll never work again. I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole, don't do it. And I said, there's no way I can't not do it. She is Abby Johnson. Is Even Abby Johnson, when she was on the set, said, that's me, and I can't believe it. Our actress that plays Abby, Ashley Bratcher, plays her beautifully. She has filled that role so well. Well, who am I supposed to talk to about this? I don't know. All right, I don't know. All I know is that here we are eight years later, and you're still thinking that you can change them. And the only thing that's changed is you, Abby. Abby is really feisty, <laughs> and she says, she says it how it is, which is one thing I really love about her, and I may have been told that I'm kind of like that <laughs> a couple of times. What I'm saying is that I'm not going to apologize for doing a job that helps women in crisis. I think that Abby fell in love with Mark because he was charismatic. He's a great looking guy who told her everything she wanted to hear. And when she found herself pregnant for the first time with Mark, she leaned on him to give her the right answer and it wasn't the right answer. Hey, it's all right, it's all right. We'll take you to a clinic and take care of it. So I had already come to Oklahoma and I had been working for a couple of days and my mom called me. I don't have a wonderful relationship with my parents. It's been, I had kind of a rocky childhood. My mom had always been very open with me when I was younger that she had had an abortion before me. Um, and she had always said things like, I was gonna abort you, but I chose not to. Like, I could never do that. But I did know that when I got ready to tell my mom that I was doing this movie and start explaining who Abby is and what the film's about, that she might have an emotional reaction. And she did. But more than I anticipated, um, I could just feel her weeping through the phone. And I said, Mom, <laughs> as a... I said, Mom, what's wrong? <laughs> and she said, you don't know this, <laughs> but I was there in the clinic. They had called my name, and I was in the room to abort you, and I got up and walked out. Uh, and I had no idea. <laughs> And so you were literally 10 seconds away from an abortion. Now, 30 years later, she's going to become the face of the pro-life world. Can God cook or what? It's a very different concept to hear someone say, you know, abortion was an option, but I chose not to do that. As opposed to hearing you're seconds away, just minutes, seconds away from never having existed. But it's really evidence that God has just planned my steps long before I ever stepped foot on earth to be here doing this today. She was created before time by God 
for this moment, for a time such as this. So I guess technically I'm an abortion survivor and I never knew it. <laughs> this is truly a before I, I formed you in the womb, I knew you moment. She was created to play this role. Amazing. I don't want people to think that this is just some movie about abortion because there's a really beautiful love story, I think, between Doug and Abby. He is just so incredibly supportive and he, he just loves her unconditionally. You're not supposed to look happier than I do. There's a really beautiful scene in the movie where Abby comes home and has had just a very hard day at work. Um, she's standing over Grace's crib, just looking at her little innocent baby there, just sleeping. So he comes up behind her and just basically lets her know that he's got her. Do you have any idea how much I love you? And you're committed to carrying this pregnancy to term. I am. We are. We only have so much time, so much energy. If you choose to spend it elsewhere, there's less of you for here. Look, I already warned Doug, we are one and done. In our story, Cheryl is the face of Planned Parenthood. This is Abby. She's our newest volunteer escort. Abby, this is Cheryl Alessandro, clinic director. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Me too. When Abby begins to realize that her own views are beginning to separate from the official Planned Parenthood line, it's Cheryl then that she'll be having her friction with. We are paying you to be a perfect instrument of corporate policy, and corporate policy is simple. We are an abortion provider. In Unplanned, you see the true agenda being revealed, and that Honestly, Planned Parenthood is a multi-billion dollar business. Congratulations. You've managed to make an enemy of one of the most powerful organizations on the planet. The statistics for abortion are mind-numbing. Worldwide since 1980, 1 1.5 billion abortions. That's what, a quarter of the planet missing? That's crazy. I think some of the most telling statistics, the most shocking statistics about abortion are just the gross numbers of abortions that take place every year. So we're at about a million abortions a year, about 3,000 a day, and this is just in the United States. And about one in three women in the U.S. have had an abortion or will have an abortion by the time they're 45. There are places in the United States where there are more African-American babies being aborted than born. To know that there is a, a silent genocide that is, is going on and occurring um, predominantly in uh, minority communities is, is a major issue. Rhonda, Rhonda, baby, please don't do this. Please, please don't do this. Whatever you need, you can come live with us. 79% of abortion facilities are put in minority neighborhoods. That baby you're carrying is gonna be just as beautiful as Lily. Rhonda, Rhonda, don't do this, Rhonda! Within our African American community, millions of unborn children have never seen the light of day. How many doctors, how many lawyers, how many pastors never had the opportunity for their gifts and their destinies to come into fruition? There is no justice for the unborn because we don't see them die. Because it's done in secret, people don't really understand what's taking place inside the womb. Part of the rationale in our culture for abortion being uh, as available as it is, is that the fetus is nothing more than a clump of cells. At this stage, between six and eight weeks, it's just fetal matter. A lump of tissue, not much more than a polyp or a blood clot. That's been the party line for a very long time. And if that's all it was, 
If it was no more than getting a tooth removed, let's say, well, you shouldn't worry about it too much. So he's not a baby yet? No, not at all. And you can't feel any pain? None whatsoever. But most everyone is coming to realize because of the ultrasounds that it's not a clump of cells anymore. It is actually a baby. When Abby was a clinic director, 70% of her clients would self-describe as Christian. In the Christian church at large, in the Catholic church, it's no longer spoken of from the pulpit because it's such a divisive issue. Priests and pastors are afraid to speak of this issue and that needs to change. You can throw your hands up in the air, you can get mad, you can get frustrated, you can blame Washington DC, you can blame your uncle who's pro-abortion, you can blame so many people, but you have to respond. And the first response has to be offering this up to God and asking for his help. So in 1998, Planned Parenthood announced plans that they would build the first ever abortion facility in College Station, Texas, a, a city with about 60,000 college students. And they bought the land under a different name, then they announced that it would be an abortion facility. And people at that moment in that community started going out and praying when it was just a pile of dirt. And they were praying from that moment on till the day that Abby legitimately left. 40 Days for Life came about out of frustration. We saw our local abortion numbers going up at that Planned Parenthood. So we did 40 days of prayer and fasting and 40 days of a nonstop peaceful vigil outside of Abby's Planned Parenthood abortion facility. And that building now is a crisis pregnancy counseling clinic, very pro-life, and also the national headquarters for 40 Days for Life. I dare say those prayers had some effect. Unbelievable. If abortion can end in one community, then it can end anywhere. Right from the outset when we started planning this film, we knew we were going to need a prayer and ministry team. We knew we were going to need protection. We knew there was going to be a lot of spiritual warfare going on surrounding the film, filming of this project. I've worked on sets before that have had people come and pray on set, but never ever have I experienced it to the magnitude that I felt it on this film. The prayer ministry team that we put together was Catholics, Evangelicals, all kinds from every denomination. I remember filming the most difficult scene in the movie, the abortion, um, the chemical abortion scene, and not realizing that not only our prayer team, but some of our crew members were standing outside of the wall holding it up with their hands, just praying over the scene. The cast and crew all said that they'd never been on any kind of a set that was anything like this. It was such a, there was such a feeling of peace, there was such a feeling of calm, there was such a feeling of camaraderie over the shooting. And, and for anyone that's not been around a movie set before, that's not the norm. So we knew the power in prayer. It was so powerful, as a matter of fact, that on every movie we do for now, it's a line item in our budget for now on. And so we intend to do it in an even bigger way. We want to recruit, for anyone who's listening, we want a million prayer warriors praying for this movie. So if you wanted to help, for, uh, help us in any way at all, that's the way you could do it. I think Unplanned does a beautiful job of showing the most effective way to reach these people and how to reach these people with the heart of Christ. Why are you telling me this? Because I understand better than anyone that inside that building, they don't offer solutions. They only offer abortions. And if you go through that door, you will not come out the same person because you can't. And everybody wants to pretend like you can, but you can't. Because the truth is you can let them get rid of your baby, but they can't get rid of the memory of your baby and neither can you, no matter how hard you try. I don't know what to do. What's your name? Hannah. You know? Hannah, it's gonna be okay, I promise. I promise, and I'll be there every step of the way. I'll do anything I can to help you. Yeah. 
Media is the most important, most powerful tool for evangelization, for spreading word, an idea, a theory. I mean, there's nothing that is as powerful as the media. Uh, we've always said that if John or Paul or Peter or any of the apostles were here today, they wouldn't go door to door knocking and saying, let me tell you about Jesus. What they would, that what they would do is they go and make a movie. No movie has spoken to post abortive women like Unplanned will speak to them. This is the first thing that's come along powerfully from the other direction, say, saying, oh, by the way, there's another side to this argument. No one will be able to walk away from this movie and say, I didn't know. And, and to me, that is the most powerful piece of this film. My dad is 84 years old, God, God bless his soul, Jewish man, very pro-choice, he's an atheist, he's everything in that way, okay? And he called me up and he said, baby, baby, uh, wh wh what are you doing? Well, he hadn't noticed that I was making a movie, okay? So I said, dad, I'm making a movie. He says, okay, okay, yeah, send me something, send me something. Okay, so I sent them the barrel scene. In this barrel scene, they're wheeling out the refuse in two bleak, big blue containers. What people don't realize is in those containers are babies. Is that what I think it is? Afraid so. And they bring it to a sanitation truck, a, a waste truck, which carts it off and then gets rid of it. So my father starts to watch it. Do you mind if we pray over it? I don't know about that, man. Please. Ten seconds in, he stops and I hear him choking up. And he can't speak and he says, ah, I, I, I can't talk about this anymore. I, I, I'll call you tomorrow. Bang. Next day comes, he gives me a call, and he says, we have to stop this abortion thing. We need to make laws to stop this. He said, you've shown us what we didn't want to see. And just see, bam, what, 10 seconds of film, going back to what we said, why it's so powerful, 10 seconds of film changed the position that he had his whole life. Now we have a face, we have a voice from the inside that is showing us what we've never seen before. I hope Unplanned, the story of Unplanned, this true story, is transformative for people. We've got all this love actually working all through the film, and you see the power of what love can do. These women need hope, and they need the mercy of God and everything else so the world tells you it's just gonna go away or it's not a big deal, that is a complete lie. And this movie will really speak to that reality. I think what uh, this movie Unplanned is gonna be able to do is really be able to help people see um, what's going on behind closed doors. Abortion's in our history, let's keep it there. Let's leave it there. And let's see a country, a culture where we love children and moms, where we don't pit them against each other, but we can love them both. I believe that it's time for us to really listen to what God is trying to say on this issue. And that's why this is such an important message for this hour. That's what I think of this movie is going to really help people that don't, don't realize what, what they're doing, what's been going on for 50 years. They're going to, it's going to be an awakening. My heart, my prayer is, is just to go out and expose what's taking place inside of these abortion facilities and to let people know that there is hope and there is healing, and there is forgiveness, and there's no condemnation because of what we've done in the past. And, you know, I hope that Unplanned will, will give people that hope. In our career, we've made many movies. We've been in the business for over 30 years. Nothing we've done in our lives is as important as this movie. There's never been, this is more than a movie, this has to become a movement. This is about simply saving babies' lives. We're really excited about getting this movie out because we think it's going to have a real impact on culture. And there are many ways you can help us. The first being prayer. The second is spreading the word on social media or talking to your friends, word of mouth. The third way is you can donate. And every dollar that comes in, we will spend that on the marketing of the movie and to bring people to the theater. Creating awareness for the film. And lastly, 
theater buyouts. What you do is you go to unplanned.com and there you can rent the theater and bring all your friends and relatives or if you're an organization or a corporation. Doing a red carpet screening in your very own town. We're pleased and proud to be bringing you this film in the spring of 2019. And we look forward to seeing you at the movies. Cause I don't believe in accidents Miracles, they don't just happen by chance As long as my God holds the world in His hands I know that there's no such thing as unplanned Deserves a voice Every child deserves a chance You are more than just a choice Cause there's no such thing as unplanned